Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Lunacillene Creations. If you're new here, thanks for checking out our little channel. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Today we're going to do a really fun, cute DIY cow print mason jar tutorial. I am going to show you step by step. It's so easy. Okay, so let's get this cow mason jar going, shall we? First, you're just going to clean the jar off. Uh, I use 70% uh, rubbing alcohol. And then you're just going to take it in, simply squirt some onto a paper towel, or you can squirt it directly onto the jar. This will help the mason jar be clean so your paint will adhere properly. Just gets rid of any residue, any grease marks, uh, anything from your fingers that might be on there. That's the first step. Okay, so we are ready to paint our first coat of white for this cow mason jar. I'm just using chalk paint here, guys, and I have a flat brush. It's pretty wide. And you just dip it in, get enough paint on there, and just start making your brush strokes. I start going uh, horizontally like that. Remember now for the first coat, especially, it doesn't have to look perfect. And for this particular mason jar craft, I'm gonna be distressing it later with sandpaper after it dries. So it does not have to be perfectly coated. You know, if there ends up being some, some marks um, where you can see the glass through, it's not a big deal. That's why this is just perfect for beginners. So you can see I'm holding it at the rim with my left hand and then just applying the paint with my right hand. I start horizontally and then I crisscross, kind of make a cross hatch with some vertical strokes. Just keep spinning it around so you've got everything pretty well coated. We're going to do the bottom at the end. And then just hold on to that rim. The paint does dry pretty quickly, so don't overwork it too much. And as I said, remember, it doesn't have to look perfect, especially just when this first coat is being applied. Don't worry too much about that. In the end, it's gonna look beautiful. You can do this. Okay, now I set it down and I have my fingers just placed inside the jar and I'm just gently spinning it as I apply the paint onto the rim. If you're going to um, put a lid on this, I would suggest not painting where the threads are because that can mess up how the, how the lid goes on. But for these particular um, mason jars, I am not going to have a lid on them, so I prefer to paint right up to the top. And you're not painting the bottom of the jar to the very end, so you can set that down. Okay, now on to the second coat. I just sped this up for time's sake. Again, you're gonna go in with your chalk paint and just brush on nice even strokes. For this second coat, I tend to put more vertical strokes because they're longer, so it will look a little bit smoother. But remember, we're going to be sandpapering this mason jar when it's completely dry. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's supposed to look a little shabby chic, you know. Make sure before you do this second coat that the first coat is completely dry as well. Otherwise, the paint, uh, the first coat will lift off and you don't want that. Now at the end, you're just going to do the bottom 
do a little crisscross pattern with your chalk paint and then smooth out the edges, brush up from the bottom. Now there's a little flip trick I'm going to show you so you can set this down so it can dry. You're going to get a little fingerprint on the bottom, but don't worry. We'll take care of that, okay? Slowly and close to the table, press your finger in the center and then release your other hand, okay? And then you just smooth out that fingerprint with some more paint. And then you're going to set this guy aside so it can completely dry. And the next day, we will do our sandpapering. Okay, so here we are. It's the next day. The jar is completely dry now. And you can see there's a little bit of a brush stroke there that I didn't get. And that's quite all right because that's the look I was going for with this one, right? And you're going to start your distressing with a fine grit sandpaper. Just take a small piece and ever so gently, remember to be gentle when you're first starting, get a feel for this. Okay, you're just going to go in and sand away some of the paint in random spots. Um, the corners, especially the edges, the lip, the rim, I really like to distress the rim. Anywhere where the, the glass is raised, okay? So when I get into the lettering, you'll see that I really like to distress the lettering quite a bit. I think that looks pretty good. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for you, okay? So you can see how it progresses and how cool it's going to look. When you're happy with the look of it, just take a dry cloth, wipe it off, clean up your work surface, and we're ready to start painting our cow spots. So I printed this off the internet um, just on regular printer paper for inspiration, but you can do the spots just completely out of your head if you'd like, whatever works for you. Okay, I'm using multi-surface uh, paint here from Folk Art, just a regular black. You can use um, acrylic, you can use enamel paint, whatever you have. At the end, we're going to seal it with a Mod Podge just to make it a little bit more durable to seal the paint on, to seal the design. Okay, so just take a regular pencil and start drawing your spots. Wiggle your pencil around and, you know, remember these are cow spots, they're, they're not meant to be uniform. And if you don't like uh, the look of one, just you know, erase it and start over. Just uh, use the pencil lightly, and then you'll be able to correct anything you need to correct. And just carry on. All right, we're almost there. Now the fun part, we get to paint on the cow pattern. Okay, shake your paint up a little bit. Pour it on your palette. I'm using a very fancy sour cream lid, as you can see. You know, we're not fancy here. We just use what we have. For some reason, the paint wasn't coming out too well, but you know, that happens. And then I've got a uh, little fluffy brush. It's uh, a little bit of an angle uh, tip, but it, it's still pretty fluffy. So I like to use that. And that can uh, go easily and make the shape around the edges of the, the cow print. I have five million different brushes to choose from here, and this is just the one I chose. All right, so dip your paint in, load your brush up, find a spot and start filling it in. It's really so easy, guys, okay? And one of the cutest patterns to do on a mason jar. You know, whether you have a country kitchen or you're doing it for a, a gift for a friend, 
These are really cute at Christmas time. You can tie a red bow around them too. I'll show you all the bows in that later, all the, uh, the trim choices that I have. Anyway, yeah, just carry on making your spots. I'm gonna speed this up for you a little bit. Again, for time's sake, I don't need to keep you here all day. But if you're painting along with me, you know, you can pause the video anytime you need to pause the video. Rewind it if you need to um, check back on a certain step. But I really wanted to give a step-by-step uh, -step tutorial for anybody who uh, was interested in painting one of these cow mason jars for themselves because I did get quite a bit of interest on this pattern. All right, so when everything's completely dry, the last step we're gonna do as far as the painting is uh, add your sealer. I've got matte Mod Podge here. Uh, sometimes I use glossy, but I have matte today. And then you're gonna simply squirt it out into your container. Sometimes they sell those really big containers, but I didn't have any. I just picked uh, up a couple small ones at the Dollar Tree. All right, and you're gonna take a flat, wide brush and simply apply the Mod Podge. Now, of course, again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Just try to make a nice, even coat. And it's gonna dry clear, so. It just gives it a nice uh, sealer makes your jar a little durable, a little more durable. It just gives it a nice finish. First you do the body of the mason jar and then I like to do the rim after that with my hand inside so my hand, my left hand doesn't get messy. Then you do your rim and then you do the bottom last. All right, so I'll just set this to the side here. And next I'm gonna show you what kind of trim options I like to do on these jars. So this one, I have my wooden spoons, my kitchen utensils in. And you can see on this one, it's a little shinier. This is what it looks like with the gloss Mod Podge, okay? And for this, I did a little piece of uh, burlap trim and I just simply glued it onto the rim. Okay, I think that looks really pretty and rustic. You can get all these uh, different kinds of trims at Michael's or the dollar store or, you know, in the craft aisle. This one here, uh, I didn't do a sealer at all on this one. This is just as is. And I just tied a small piece of jute. My kid has his toys in this one. This is his. I think this is the one he helped me paint. So yeah, your kids can do this project with you too. That one looks pretty nice as well. 
All right, so as far as trim, you can use a little bit of twine, a little bit of hemp cord. And this is the wider burlap trim that I had on my uh, wooden spoon holder one. This one is really pretty, has a little bit of lace in it. Okay, and that one's quite wide. So if you're gonna do that one, you would uh, line it up, fold it over, and then use a hot glue gun to get in there and uh, attach that. You know, the options are really endless. If you're doing these at Christmas, you could put a piece of red ribbon. Um, that looks nice too. Any kind of a jute cord like this one will work. It's a bit heavier. That one uh, looks nice too. This is a skinny little jute rope. Just tie it around, make a little knot. Whatever you think looks good. It just gives it a nice little finishing touch, I find. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. Uh, our little cow mason jar painting tutorial for beginners. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a leopard pattern one next, maybe. Anyway, here's how they look set up in my country kitchen. It's like a farmhouse style. And uh, they're simple and really cute and easy to do. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking and sharing this content. It helps get it out to people who are interested in these types of videos. And from all of us here at Luna Celine Creations, I hope you have a terrific day. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.